Hello and welcome back to Fresh Off The Reel. My name is Lib. And my name is Pat the Hedgehog. If you know, you know, this is a topical reference. The trailer for Sonic 3 comes out tomorrow, so it's topical and dates the episode. Thanks for dating the episode. This episode is going to come out in four months. Uh, that movie will be out by then. It's good. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about the, the internet sensation, Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, that, that new Ryan Reynolds movie, directed by Sean Levy, uh, a free guy. We're talking about that one, right? Yeah, we're going all the way back to episode two of this show. We're talking about free guy again. Is that really episode two? That, that was, crazy. yeah, that was episode two. <laughs> Every time I think of that movie, it gets worse. Yeah, you know what? Hold on, what I have it at? Three and a half? I'm about to put it down right now. I have it at three. All right, I just put it down. You just made nice. history, Sean Levy. Good job. In the wrong way. In the wrong way. <laughs> but he also made history with this movie, because this movie is doing pretty good. This movie is making money. It's the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, right? I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, the highest grossing R-rated movie ever made. Deserved question mark? I don't know. But it, it, it got that Marvel logo on it, so it's going to do well. Yeah, we're gonna find out today. We're so we're gonna talk cinema. Last episode, I I spent like sixty percent of it uh, talking about Dune. So now it's time for Pat's sixty percent. Yeah, this today episode. I'm gonna spend sixty percent talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, which is not what the episode is. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> Deadpool and uh, Wolverine. We, we saw it in theaters. We saw this one together in theaters. We were a large group for this one. Yep, yeah, I think this. Might have been the biggest group I've been to see a movie to in theaters. We were 14 people, I think. That's a lot I'm not going to fact check that. I think we were 14 people. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. <laughs> it, was, it was a real big group. It was a fun time to see it in theaters. Um, this is another one of those Marvel movies where it is a much better experience to watch it in the theater. Because I can't imagine it hits anywhere near as hard without the people behind you screaming. But it sure is a movie. Uh, I gave it a 4 out of 5, personally. I enjoyed it. It was good. I'm making a lot of jokes about the quality of the movie. But just like jokes aside, um, I have to say I did enjoy it. It's, it was good. Uh, as good as Deadpool 1 and 2, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out together. <laughs> but uh, it's good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we're going to go on a bit of a journey today. Because we're not just going to be talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. Because this is the third movie in a trilogy. We're probably just going to end up talking about the first two movies anyway. You're going to get a good chunk of review today. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be, it, this is mainly focused on the Deadpool and Wolverine, but we will obviously reference those other two. Um, I guess we'll get those out of the way, though, right now. Um, what do you think of Deadpool 1 and 2, Lib? Well, Deadpool 1 and 2, I watched them pretty far apart for some reason. I don't know, I watched Deadpool, like, two years ago, and then I watched Deadpool 2 a couple months ago, before Deadpool and Wolverine came out. Like, right before we went to see it, I watched Deadpool 2. <laughs> we watched that together, too. Yeah, we watched we watched all these together. All three of them we watched together. Deadpool one, I gave it a four out of five. I like it a lot. I thought it was really funny. Knowing it came out on Valentine's Day makes it a lot funnier. Yep, it is a Valentine's Day movie. Mister Deadpool, he's a funny guy. I like, I like that uh, a lot of the movie focuses on his backstory. I never, I don't know about Deadpool's backstory, so it was fun to learn about it. He breaks the fourth wall a lot. It's really funny when he does. Topical jokes, good humor, all around good movie, I would say. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is um, damn near perfect in this character. He's, he's in this role. He's great. Um, that is something consistent across all three movies. I think he's really good in them. Ryan Reynolds is an interesting actor to talk about because I don't know if he's just a really charming guy or if he's a good actor. And I'm still not sure. He might have a questionable agent. Because um, he isn't in a lot of really good movies, but he is a very big name, which is interesting. I, I can't think of a movie he's in that's like stand out. This is like fantastic cinema, you know, like he's in he's in that the Deadpool trilogy, obviously he's in Bullet Train. He's in Free Guy. He's in Back to Pikachu. <laughs> like all these movies are like yeah, some of them are good, but he doesn't have a big standout role yet, which is interesting for someone who's like such a big name as he is. And uh, it leaves me questioning as if he's actually a really good actor or if I just think he's charming and handsome, which he is. He is charming and handsome. I think he has yet to find that big standout role. But uh, I think Wade Wilson, Deadpool, is um, as close as you're going to get for right now. 
he's fantastic in this character. He does a great job. Yeah, I think so too. He's really funny in these in these movies. He writes most of the jokes, I'm pretty sure. Let me check. Yeah, he's he's credited as a writer and producer for all three of the movies. A lot of I I get a lot of the humor comes straight from him. So the delivery on all the jokes is usually really good. Uh usually we're going to talk usually, about it. Usually. Yeah, you're you're going to you're going to get some stinkers. Yeah, he also did the jokes for Free Guy. So, yeah. <laughs> We had the same director as Free Guy and Man Does It Show. Yeah, yeah, it really does. <laughs> we had we had an interesting discussion. This is this is related to Deadpool, but we had an interesting discussion with uh, one of our friends out for dinner about uh, movies that have sauce. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it, 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 like, I think Deadpool two. I think regardless of its flaws, okay, as as a lot of sauce, it's a very saucy movie. I think like like D- David, it's David L- Lich. Wait, Lich? David Lich? David Leach. Be- David Leach. His movies have sauce, okay? The, 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 the choreography, the acting sequences, the way the movie is shot, the cinematography, just there's sauce behind them, right? And then we left him behind for some reason and we went to Sean Levy. And not to say this movie's bad or that Sean Levy movies are bad, but, we're, but like it, it's missing sauce, you know? <laughs> it's just... It's missing that little oomph, you know, that little little hot sauce on your eggs. That's what this movie is missing. It's the difference between a movie that's got, like, good shit in it, and, like, you watch it, and you're like, oh my god, this is great, I love this movie. And it's the same, like, kind of experience. It's the same kind of movie with the same kind of quality, but after you watch it, you're like, well, that was a movie. Yeah, like, I I was re-watching... Um, some scenes from Deadpool 1 and 2. And spef- specifically Deadpool 2. Because I think Deadpool 2 is a better shot movie overall. It's the best shot of the three. I'm just like, man, how did we go from this to Sean Levy? <laughs> like, I-, I feel bad because I'm shitting on this man who I don't know. And, and who owes me nothing. <laughs> but-, but but Sean Levy is just a... He's a very... He's not a bad director, but he's a very by-the-books director. And it's not all on him, I guess, right? Because there's other people involved. But he is manning the, the ship. He's at the helm, and it just it, it feels like it's lacking like flavor. You know, you have like a nice steak, right? Like a a, a good steak is good regardless of the seasoning, right? But imagine having an unseasoned steak. That's what a Sean Levy movie is. Yeah, it's still a steak. It's still a steak, unless you're real steel. But we don't talk about real steel. But like, it's still a steak. Deadpool Depp, Wolverine is still a steak, but like Deadpool two and, and one are like a well seasoned perfect medium rare steak and this is like just a a good steak you know and that's how i feel about these three movies that's the best (laughs) analogy you're getting out of me (laughs) i think death one wolverine has good moments it has good scenes it has very memorable quotable moments but it's missing that oomph that i think the first two movies had that puts it um i'm still a little bit behind i have all three of these movies sitting at a three and a half out of five so they're all like like on that same tier for me i don't think one is a lot better than the others. I think they're all within that same tier. But this one is definitely the the bottom of the three. I think I wasn't so sure when I left the theater because obviously, like you're, it's still fresh, right? But now that I've had a couple of weeks to to think about it and some, I think it is the weakest of the three. And yeah, so that's where I stand on on the three movies. I think Deadpool one and two are really really solid superhero movies, and this one's a good superhero movie, but it's just missing a little bit of that kick. Yeah, I have the first movie at 4 to 5. I have the second movie at 4 to 5. Deadpool and Wolverine, I have 3.5 out of 5. For me, Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2, they're kind of like on the same tier. I still can't decide which one I like better. Some t- some days is Deadpool 1, some days is Deadpool 2. I can't decide. They're they're kind of like, they live in the on the same level in my head. But Deadpool and Wolverine, God, the name is so long. I'm just going to call it Deadpool 3. <laughs> Deadpool 3 it's 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 clearly the the weakest of the three it's still a good movie but it's not as good as the other two which is weird because I think performance wise this movie is great we've been saying and Wolverine a lot so like Hugh Jackman's back as Wolverine right and he's really good in this movie and I think all the other main characters do a really good job but I think just because Sean Levy is such a sauceless director <laughs> that it, it it holds it back a little bit also, we've talked about this a lot, but we're in the multiverse saga of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? I'm 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 over it. I'm just kind of over it now, you know. Like I got No Way Home, and I got this, and I'm done. I think I'm I'm just like 
Give me, give me other things, please. Give me the Batman too. Give me superhero movies that are grounded, please. I'm tired of this multiverse stuff. That's that's my biggest takeaway from this movie. Is now I'm just officially over it. Yeah, like the, we everybody knew this movie was going to be a huge uh, cameo fest. I mean, that was what Pat predicted <laughs> this movie yeah. would be. And I'm and I'm happy. I ate that shit up. There were cameos in this movie that made me scream in the theater. Uh, I'm not complaining. I'm very happy with a lot of the things I got from this movie. But I think now that it's done, it's over, the movie's finished, and I've had time to think about it, I'm just kind of done with the multiverse stuff. And I realize this is a very awkward time for me to say that, because we have two multiverse Avengers movies, and apparently another multiverse Spider-Man movie coming out that I'm very much not looking forward to. There's your Spider-Man reference. And uh, I'm just kind of over the multiverse stuff. I'm ready to move on. Yeah, same. I'm I'm bored of it now. In five years, when this is all done, I'm ready to move on. I'm I'm straight up bored of it now. Like I yeah. Like seeing seeing cameos on screen is exciting, but after a while, the excitement just like it goes away. It, like just something about just cameos in movies in general. It's like you got that you got that initial excitement seeing them on screen. And like the first couple lines, it's like, oh wow, I can't believe they're in this movie. But then afterwards, when the movie actually starts using their character, he just blends in and just becomes like, it's just another character in the movie. And I think this movie does a better job than certain other characters, like uh, certain other movies. Like I, I, I think about the Flash a lot when thinking about this movie, the, the live action movie, not the show, the one starring Ezra Miller. Because I think this movie succeeds in a way that that movie failed, where that because it, it, it they do the same thing conceptually, where they just have cameos from both existing movies and non-existent ones, and um, Gambit is in this movie, and and that's a cameo to a a character that doesn't exist. That movie never happened, right? Flash Flash did similar things with like the Nicolas Cage Superman, and that that movie is very cameo heavy. The way the same way this one is. But I think this one succeeds in the, in the sense that this movie makes those characters feel like they're characters and they're not just shoehorned in, which I appreciate. And I hope, I can only hope that Secret Wars and Doomsday at least try to maintain that. They're not going to, but I can only hope that they try to maintain them. Like, uh, Elektra, Gambit, and Blade are in this movie, and, and, and X-23, but she's actually a story-crucial character in this one. And obviously Hugh Jackman, but he is a lead. Um, they're cameos, obviously, but they feel like well-fleshed-out characters. And that's more than I could say about everybody in The Flash, including The Flash. So I think that movie, this movie succeeds in a way that that movie failed. But it, it doesn't negate the problem that I think Marvel, especially right now, is relying too much on cameos. And I'm just kind of over it and I'm tired. Yeah, I'm just the the over reliance on cameos is just like it, it's it's lessening the effect of cameos and it's uh it's just put it's putting them it's putting the a uh, sour taste in my mouth about it. Yeah, th there was a time when I was excited to like see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in, in the movie again, but now it's created and like now Hugh Jackman's back again, and it's created an expectation that like they're gonna come back again. And there's no confirmation of this, right? This is just fan speculating. But the fact that it's a possibility that they could come back again, just, like, I don't want that, you know? Like, I'm, 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 maybe I'm the weird one. I'm part of the minority who doesn't want that. I don't know. At least on Twitter, that seems to be the case. But I just, I'm, I'm, I don't want them back. Like, I, I, you know, I had my, you know, I had my, my, my dinner, you know, I watched Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and then I had my dessert with No Way Home. I don't want one. Like, I'm good. Let's put these characters to rest. Let's put Hugh Jackman to rest and let's let's move on. I'm ready for the MCU to tackle the X-Men and, and mutants and cast their Wolverine. Because all all of this is doing, and I, I realize I've been complaining a lot about this movie. So I just want to get this out of the way. All, all bringing Hugh Jackman back again is just going to further prove the point that you can't replace Hugh Jackman. And while I think Hugh Jackman is great as this character and he is like the face to the name for a lot of people... I think it's time to cast someone new. And I say that knowing that Marvel just casted Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. But it's time to recast and, and bring in a new face, bring in new blood to play uh, Wolverine. The same way we've done with Spider-Man in the past and other characters. It's time. Hugh Jackman it, it served, it, served his time. He served it well for the most part. 
looking at UX Men Origins, but I think it's time to let him go. And I think this movie does a good job at doing that. The way this movie ends. I just really hope we don't see him again. Please don't bring him back in Secret Wars. Hugh, you're not listening to this. Don't take the paycheck. You don't need it. Give it to me. Give me the money. Yeah, I'll take it too. Don't give it to him. Give it to me. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Give if, him to me. If uh, if Kevin Feige approaches you, same Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield, don't do it. They're going to fucking do it. <laughs> They're going to do it. They're, it's their job. Their job is an actor. They're going to do it. <laughs> Secret War is going to be... T- Three hours of cameos. Nothing, they're not even going to speak. It's just going to cut from one cameo to another. <laughs> It'll just be three hours of the Avengers theme. That's the only audio in the whole movie. And then it's just a bunch of cameos. <laughs> and you, you know what? Still better than X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> uh, speaking of Hugh Jackman, um, we're, finally, we're, we're about to follow up on something that started all the way back in episode 27 of this show. Longtime viewers will remember this. Pat recommended me the first X-Men movie, and he said it in, t- in anticipation for me to continue watching them until I f- watch Logan. And it happened, guys. I watched it. I watched Logan. <laughs> What'd you think of Logan? It was fucking amazing. You were right. Yeah, Lo- Logan's great. Or Logan's a fantastic movie. And my one fear for this movie came true, but they played it well, so I'm not even mad. <laughs> I was worried that when they they were gonna ruin Logan's ending in this movie, and they do, but it's one hundred percent a joke, and they know what they're doing, and I loved it. I ate that shit up. Every everyone's seen it. Everyone's talking about it. But the 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 opening credits is is Deadpool fighting the TVA with Logan Logan's fucking skeleton as weapons. Yeah, <laughs> and it's playing Bye 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 by uh, NSYNC. And I loved it. It was great. I'm happy that if, if that's the route they're going to go, I'm happy they at least turned it into a big joke and it was funny and it was entertaining. I, I loved it. It was good. Because it, it, still, it still doesn't ruin the impact of Logan's ending, I don't think. And they still treat his death as something important. And it's even woven into the story in a way that's really weird that I'll talk about later. <laughs> but it is woven into the story and it's not completely uh, like desecrated. Yeah, Logan's great. Logan's good. When I recommended you that, did, was this movie announced? I don't remember. I, I just wanted you to watch Logan. Yeah, you just okay. wanted me to watch Logan. Hey, well, I, it worked out long term, I guess. I was, I, I had a plan. It was, I was Kevin Feige. Pat is the Kevin Feige of Fresh Off the Reel. I, I'm gonna make sure the cameos are over, guys. No, there will be no cameos in Fresh Off the Reel. We'll only have new characters, no cameos. Goodbye, Toon Man. Yeah, sorry, Steph. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll replace you with, with the younger, better model. We're going to be inevitably, inevitably talk about Barnyard. We're talking about you. You know, you know, I don't you know. You know who you are. You know who you are. And, and, and Steph, I know you're listening. You know who we're talking about. <laughs> uh, anyways, Deadpool 3. Deadpool 1 and 2, really good movies. Uh, they're enjoyable. I didn't watch them in theaters. That, that I should have mentioned. I, I I saw them at home. I didn't watch them in theaters. I didn't even watch them when they came out. But I still really liked the movies. Deadpool, Wolverine, we watched in theaters. Yeah, it. it I don't think Deadpool 1 and 2 necessarily are like... Like, you, you can watch them at home and I think you get the same experience. I don't, I don't think they like are must-watch theater movies. I think this movie is a theater movie, though. And it's still enjoyable. I still had a good time with it, but I definitely feel like being in the theater with the crowd and getting everyone getting excited together makes the movie. Yeah, it's like that with a lot of Marvel movies, and this movie's no exception. And maybe that is a different problem, but it doesn't matter because I saw it in theater, so it's fine. It doesn't apply to me. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, who cares, right? Yeah, this movie, um, it's very, it's a very predictable plot. It's just, um, you know, the TVA is after Deadpool, which we all expected. But not for the reason you might think, and this movie actually makes a joke about this, that's funny. Um, if you remember that I did in Deadpool 2, um, Wade goes back in time with Cable's like time travel thing. And we thought, oh, okay, so he's going to go after... The TVA is going to go after Deadpool because he fucked with time. But it, wrong, which apparently that, that was supposed to happen. Deadpool was supposed to go back in time and kill Hitler. <laughs> Maybe, supposedly. <laughs> TVA didn't get involved with that. <laughs> and they're actually getting involved because this movie introduces a brand new concept to the multiverse saga, and that they don't elaborate on at all. <laughs> <laughs> is um, the universes have anchor beings, and the Fox universe's anchor being was Logan. 
So when the anchor being dies, the universe is essentially fucked and there's nothing you can do about it. That is about as much as the movie says. They don't elaborate further than that. It's best we don't think about it because we could only hope this never comes up again. It's a stupid a stupid concept. It's one of the stupidest multiverse concepts I've ever heard in my life. I've seen a lot of multiverse things in my life. That's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Uh, Logan was the anchor being of the Fox universe, and the TVA is tasked to watch the universe just die, essentially. But our, our main villain... Or our, is he the, I don't know, new secondary villain, I guess, because Cassandra Nova would be the main villain. I guess. But Mr. TVA man's like, no, we're not going to watch the universe explode. We're going to kill it now. So so Deadpool originally goes on a journey to find a replacement Wolverine. And that leads into a related adventure where they end up in like the void. And they're trying to, they're trying to get back home. And also... Um, Let's let's hype Will Logan up because this Logan sucks and he's the worst for for whatever reason. This one is the worst Wolverine, which um, the movie kind of hypes up that oh, like this Logan sucks. He can't help you. He did the worst, most unimaginable thing, and um, what he did wrong was he's a bit of a pussy and he ran <laughs> when the humans went after the X Men. Oh no! <laughs> and then. And then, he, and then he got angry and killed a bunch of people, which is bad, but but I, I would have thought he did something worse. It's still pretty bad, I guess. All the X-Men are dead, and it's, it's kind of his fault, but not really, because all he did was not help, but it then made things worse for everybody. Like, the movie even starts with him sitting at a bar, and he's, like, not arrested or anything, so it can't be that bad, you know? Like... People are still alive. <laughs> yeah, and, and like no one's like afraid of him. He's just in a bar and like, can you like leave? I don't want to serve you. You know, <laughs> like it, it, all I'm saying is this can't be the worst slogan. Like like as a person, he can't be the worst one. But uh, that that's our story. Is is Deadpool and Wolverine? That's the title. Um, <laughs> go on a journey to return back to the Fox universe, and um, Logan has to. Learn what it means to become a hero again, and Deadpool has to find his family and save his home again because he needs to feel important. He needs to matter, and Vanessa is for the third movie his motivation because that's the only plot points we could give Deadpool in these movies. And Wolverine needs to learn the power of friendship. Yeah, or f the power of family. If you know, you know. That's like the really basics. Basic, like, really poorly told version of this movie story. I like it. I think it's fun. It's kind of like a weird superhero buddy cop adventure. I think Ryan Reynolds and, and Hugh Jackman have a lot of chemistry together. I think they bounce off each other very well, which was important. I think they needed to work well together for this movie to succeed at all. And um, they do a good job. Yeah, considering the last time they worked together was in X-Men Origins... <laughs> They uh they actually have really good chemistry and that they it, it works well in this movie. Hugh Jackman, you know, you don't really picture him as like a funny comedic guy, but some of the things he says in this movie are pretty funny. Yeah, he says some some actually pretty funny things in this movie. In in a, in a Wolverine kind of way, which works. But like he's 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 actually like a pretty funny guy. Yeah, although I'm a little tired of seeing Hugh Jackman played Wolverine. Please get somebody else next time. He's still the best Wolverine on screen. He's still really good at it. He really sinks into his roles. You can really feel his character on screen. The bad part about this movie is not the uh, the performances. They're all good. Except for one. <laughs> okay. We're just talk about that now. <laughs> talk about, I'll talk about Mr. Gambit. Yeah. So this movie, like we've mentioned, complained about, this movie is full of cameos, right? One of them is um, uh, Gambit, the X-Men. The card guy. The card guy. If you've seen the 90s animated series, he's, he's a very popular character. He's my favorite X-Men. He's cool. I love Gambit. And, and a long time ago, Channing Tatum was trying to get this movie made the same way Ryan Reynolds did with Deadpool. Um, he really like, like pivoted the... What's the word? Not pivoted. He, he really pushed for this Gambit movie to be made. And it never happened. So Ryan Reynolds approached him with this opportunity to play Gambit in this movie. And it sure is a performance. <laughs> now, now, to be fair to Chatting Tatum, it's pretty obvious in the movie, but a lot of people didn't get it, I guess. So they had to outright confirm and say it publicly. Uh, it's a bad performance on purpose. 
Yeah. Like 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 he was told <laughs> to speak in a, in an accent that like you could barely understand. Like like this was it was purposely bad. He it, it still is what we were given, so we have to talk about it. He has an interesting accent in this movie. Yeah, he's got a weird accent. I don't know. I don't remember what is what he sounded like in the cartoon, but it, it, he didn't sound like that. <laughs> he's uh, he sure made a name for himself. Oh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. That's, there, there you go. I wasn't going to say it. He did it on purpose. And I, I don't know how people didn't realize that because Deadpool literally makes comments about not being able to understand what he's saying. It's clearly part of the movie. But I, I've seen, I'm seeing so many people out there saying that putting Gambit in this movie was a huge mistake. They just missed the joke. They missed the point. <laughs> yeah, I think they just missed the joke because he's hilarious. Like, he's really funny. I love him. I, lo I love him in this movie. I really like Gambit as a superhero. Gambit's my favorite X-Men. I used to love watching the cartoon. Yeah, he's great, and, and he's great in um, X-Men 97, from what I've heard. I haven't seen it yet. And I, honestly, I'm not opposed to Chang Tatum getting an actual opportunity to play Gambit in the future, if if that's a route they're going to think to take. I don't think they will, but you know, you never know. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, right? It's kind of like when um, John Krasinski played Mr. Fantastic. like like. But now that we have it, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him do it again. That, but his case is also different because we never had a, a Gambit, right? So or at least a Gambit solo movie. So I think he 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 deserves a, another shot where he's not purposely doing a poor accent. If there is a Gambit movie, I don't know if I want Channing Tatum to be Gambit. I think I I, I think I'd, I'd ideally want a younger actor, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it if if the the voice was an actual voice yeah it would have to be an actual voice because <laughs> when i when i look at channing tatum i just think comedy movie when it when i look at him my name is jeff 21 jump street yeah uh, like a uh, free guy he was in free guy he was in uh sh uh she's the man he was also in free guy <laughs> yeah man sean levy he really picks him he was in the hateful eight and he was pretty good in the hateful eight but he didn't have a big role I, I like Channing Tatum. I think he's a funny guy. I think he could play a gambit in, a, in an actual, like, serious movie. I don't think he'll get that chance, though. I don't think he will. I mean, Magic, like, when I see it, all I think Magic Mike. That's all I think. You know, I see Channing <laughs> Tatum on screen. That's Magic Mike. But, like, if this is it, if this is all we're getting, uh, I, I enjoyed this performance. You're meant to laugh at it. In that regard, I think it succeeds. And he's cool. His powers are cool. Gambit's just a cool character. It was cool to see him in live action. Um, the same can be said about um, our other cameos. We'll just run through the cameos now. It just isn't really a better time to. But uh, Elektra from the, the 2003 Daredevil is in this. And apparently Ben Affleck was, was planned a, a, as well. This concept art of Ben Affleck and um, Nick Cage's ghostwriter. Um, I, I don't know if they were approached and they declined or it was just an early concept that they wanted to and things fell through. Um, but uh, we have Elektra and uh, Elektra's cool. She's in this movie. She does the thing with, like, the size, you know? Like, she flips, flips them around. I like Elektra. <laughs> she's cool. She doesn't feel like she chews up space. I think she's, she's fine in this movie. She's easily the least important of the cameos. Um, but it was cool to see her. And then we have uh, Blade, as Wesley Snipes is back. I was very excited to see Wesley Snipes. And I knew Blade was going to be in this movie in some way or another. I wasn't spoiled at all. I went into this one for the first time completely unspoiled. <laughs> And um, yeah, for real. I just I I had a feeling that it was either going to be Wesley Snipes or um, Muhammad Ali, right? No. <laughs> no. Who's playing? Who's playing Blade now? First of all, Muhammad Ali was a boxer. <laughs> True. I'm right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But who's playing? It's who's Maharshala playing? Ali. Maharshala. Ah, there Ma you go. I'm I'm sorry. My bad, guys. <laughs> um, I thought he was going to be in it or Wesley Snipes. Would have been one or the other. Just has like some cross promotion. Because that Blade movie is still coming out, despite it being in development hall currently, at the time of recording. Um, God knows if that movie's actually going to come out, right? Well, he said in the movie, there's only going to be one Blade, so... Yeah, but is that a joke about that movie never coming out, or does he not know, right? <laughs> like, no one tell him. No one tell him, right? That's two jokes. Don't they tell gave... Wesley Snipes. <laughs> they, they, they gave us two jokes for the price of one, okay? <laughs> but it, it was cool to see Wesley Snipes. Um, I like those old Blade movies. They're not good, but I like them. I've never seen them. We can, we can watch. I, I, I'd, I'd watch them with you if you're ever interested. I'd watch them with you. I'd be, yeah, I'd be down to watch them. They're fun, campy superhero movies from the 2000s, right? They're like the 90s, 2000s. 
they're fun. I, I, I think people give them a lot of shit, and some of it is warranted. <laughs> but um, they're they're fun movies in the same way, like like Spider Man One is fun, and like and like um, X Men first one is fun. It, it's it's a different era of comic book movie. Yeah, I'd I'd, uh, I'd give it a watch. It uh, it sounds like a fun movie. But I, I just I can't believe they that uh, Wesley Snipes even agreed to come back because he he notoriously hated playing Blade back in the day. Well, I guess a long time has passed, so it's probably like it's been twenty years. Holy crap! It's been twenty years. Blade Trinity was in two thousand four. Yeah, the first Blade was like ninety nine, ninety eight. Some yeah, ninety eight. Just to tell you guys how much he hated playing Blade, you probably know about the the scene in Blade Trinity. Uh, where he was on uh, the hospital bed and he all he had to do was open his eyes. That's the only thing he had to do. But he just refused to do it and they had to CG his eyes open. I mean, when, when Kevin Feige comes to your door with a paycheck, you don't turn down the mouse. The mouse gives good money. And honestly, I can't blame him. Because, <laughs> like, if Mickey Mouse came to my door with a paycheck, you know I'm taking it, right? If you don't, he'll kill you. What's Wesley Snipes even up to these days? Like, does he still act? Let's find out. I can't imagine he's up to much. He was in a movie called Back on the Strip, and another movie in 2021 called True Story. Yeah, I'm looking at all his movies, and there's nothing that I've seen, so I don't think he's been up to much. He was in the Coming to America sequel. Okay. Well, he's in Deadpool and Wolverine, and he's, he's cool. He's fun. Yeah, he's fun. <laughs> I get to watch him fight off... Deadpool variants and evil mutants from the X-Men movies with his katana and his gun. It's cool. Yeah, it was cool seeing Blade. I hope we get that Blade movie. Like, I hope it I hope it comes out one day. I hope it comes <laughs> out. I hope. You know what's another thing? Uh, I think it was Last Game Awards or something. Not a video game podcast. But Last Game Awards, a, a Blade video game was announced. And that got cancelled because the studio shut down or something? Like, shit. Yeah, like Blade is not good when it comes to getting projects off the ground, apparently. But he's in Marvel Midnight Suns, and that's pretty cool. He's in Marvel Snap. Uh, uh, fans of the channel know Pat loves Marvel Snap. <laughs> I guess it might be the first time I've referenced it on the podcast. But I talk about it a lot privately <laughs> and on streams. I just looked it up because you know how in May Microsoft closed a bunch of studios? Was the one making the Blade game one of the ones that got cut? Yeah. <laughs> Un unfortunate. Arcane was making the Blade game. Apparently, but I'm looking uh, on Wikipedia, it says the game is still being made. So maybe some other studio picked it up. I guess we'll find out eventually. Because I think a Blade video game would work. Yeah, for sure. Make it like a character action game or like a, like an, like an uh, God of War type game. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like just, just killing vampires. That'd be sick. Just just don't get Insomniac to do it. Please, let Insomniac do anything else. Yeah, like Ratchet and Clank. I, what do you, I think you mean Spider-Man. No, I mean Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> no. Or Insomniac. You know what's another thing Insomniac should do? Sunset Overdrive 2. That'd be fun. Or you know what? Abandon all that and just make a new game. Nah, I'm gonna make, we're going to make, make Venom 2. <laughs> Venom 1 hasn't been made. Venom 1 is not making, even a thing. They're making Venom 2, baby. <laughs> Knack 3, guys, that's what they should do. <laughs> Knack 3, baby. <laughs> I can't wait for Knack 3 to come out and then and then Donkey's gonna make a video like, you know, guys, I gotta confess, I don't actually like Knack 2. But Knack 3, though. Knack 3 is gonna happen. Knack is back. <laughs> Not a video game podcast, by the way. Yeah, we should, we should start one. <laughs> Fresh off the controller. Fresh off the... We fit bounce board. Fresh off the rolling rocker. Write that one down. That's the one. That's the that's one. That's the one. <laughs> that's, that's the <laughs> Our first spin off. <laughs> yeah, after Blade, we have. Um, I, I think this is the big one aside from um, X23. But I think the, the, the big one was Chris Evans coming back as not Captain America, but um, as Johnny Storm. I was really happy to see him. He's not in the movie for long. He gets killed off pretty early. And even that death is, is treated as a joke. Um, something that's common in the Deadpool trilogy. It's not exclusive to this movie. But I think like it was just really cool to see him again. I, I, I don't know why lately, but with like all the Fantastic Four news, um, especially at, like I think it was D23, 
the CinemaCon or D23? One of the recent cons we, where we got news about the Fantastic Four. I've just been in a big Fantastic Four mood. I've been wanting to rewatch those movies. And it was nice to see Chris Evans back. I had a feeling Chris Evans was going to be in the movie. Because uh, in my personal, like our private Discord server, one of my friends who had seen the movie before us posted a gif of Captain America in general chat. This was unprompted. And it was like animated series Captain America. It wasn't Chris Evans. But I knew he, I knew he had seen the movie. And I saw that gif. I'm like, Chris Evans is in the movie. But yeah. but he's trying to he's trying to trick me. He's gonna be human torch, he's not gonna be Captain America. I fucking called it. I'm Kevin Feige, bro. I'm him. But yeah, he's in this movie. He's awesome. I love to see him. Like like even though he died or he died, got his powers like stolen, he got sucked. <laughs> as soon as he said flame on and transformed. Right? Um I just loved it. Like like I realized I'm part of the problem of like because like, Marvel keeps making these these cameo fest multiverse movies. Because people just keep eating dumb shit like that up. But when he said flame on, I ate that shit up. I became part of the problem. It was a cool scene. I like that. It. it was a cool scene. Um, he, he's he's in the movie too little. I think he should have been in it more. I think they wasted him by killing him off so early. But also, it was funny. And we got a funny post credit scene. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta make sacrifices, you know? I thought it was a good cameo. I liked it. I think it's my favorite cameo in the whole movie. Yeah, it's my favorite as well. Aside from Daphne Keene as X-23, who they put in the trailer that came out the week before the movie came out, and I really fucking wish they didn't. Yeah, me too. Like, uh, we, were, we, were at, we were at a restaurant, and we, we were just chilling. We were just hanging out. And then I was like, hold on, I need to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom, I pull out my phone, and it's the first thing I see on Instagram. The first thing I see. I didn't even look for it. I just opened Instagram, and I saw uh, IGN, I'm blaming you, IGN. Who, they was like, oh, oh just Daphne Keen coming back as X-23 and Deadpool Wolverine. I don't want, I didn't want to know that. I was purposely not watching that trailer. Yeah, same. I purposely, like, stayed away from that trailer, and I, and I got fucking ruined for me. That would have been like, such a good surprise. But nope. Sorry. Thanks, IGN. In the age of the internet, we don't get surprises anymore. Remember when you could just watch something or play something? And, like, you weren't on the internet, so you didn't know things, and you just got to enjoy it raw? Well, I still do that. You're addicted to Twitter, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. I can't do that anymore. I have a problem. <laughs> I played Breath of the Wild, like, five years after it came out. And you know me, I'm a huge Zelda nerd. I, I, anything that has to do with Zelda, I'm there for it. But I, I avoided Breath of the Wild like the Black Plague because I wanted to f experience it myself. And I didn't have a Switch until like five years after the Switch came out. And then I got to play Breath of the Wild. And I was still playing it blind. I played the whole thing blind for five years. I'm not even a Zelda it. fan and I got Breath of the Wild spelled before the game came out. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's the difference of being addicted to Twitter and not being addicted to Twitter. <laughs> I can't stay away from Elon Musk. <laughs> His Elden Ring build, it calls me. <laughs> uh, but th those are all the cameos. None of them, like, were stupid cameos, I don't think. Like, they were all, like, none of them overstayed their welcome. They were good cameos. I mean, like, the Thor one kind of made me cringe a little bit. I mean, the, the, Thor, the Thor one's, like, like clearly a joke, though. So I, I didn't, like, pay much attention to it. Yeah. N none of the cameos did that thing that a lot of these movies do, where they, like, hold the camera on the actor. Where, like, the audience is supposed to, like, applaud and scream and, and stand up in the theater. Like, the, <laughs> like, this movie doesn't do that, which I appreciated. If, if you guys listening have no idea what we're talking about, go watch No Way Home and watch the scene where uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield come in. There's clearly a fucking, like, like five to ten second gap where he just, stare, he just, like, stands there and doesn't move or say anything. And that's when you're supposed to be clapping. And you probably didn't notice when you watched it in the theaters because you were clapping. Yeah, you fucking simpletons. <laughs> I know you were. Don't lie to me. I was too. This one's even worse. Like, honestly, the, the camera holds on him for so long. Go watch Infinity War. Go in the scene in the train station where Captain America shows up. He The, the camera stays on Captain America for, like... 10 seconds. <laughs> they, they, they do the same thing in like, Endgame, like every fucking... Like in the portal scene, they pause on everybody for like 5 seconds. <laughs> it's so like, Don't lie to me, I know you were coughing. I mean, not you, Lib, because you watched it at home. 
Yeah, well, yeah all, you, all, the, all the movies we just mentioned, I watched at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, Mister Audience, or this is audience member who who watched it in theaters. I know you were clapping. <laughs> and Marvel knows too, so like they they keep doing that shit. But thankfully, at least though, there weren't any that were like super obvious and noticeable in this movie. They definitely paused for like a bit when Daphne Keen walked down the stairs in this movie, right when she's first seen. Um, which would have been great if it wasn't in a trailer a week before, but I digress. <laughs> this movie doesn't uh, hold on them for too long, which I appreciate. I think so far the only the only movie I've seen in a theater that made me scream scream from a cameo is Doctor Strange Two when uh, when John Krasinski came up on screen, and it was also like right after I'd finished watching The Office for the first time. So I was, it's John Krasinski was very fresh in my mind. <laughs> it just surprised me seeing him on screen. You were like, man, Jim Hopper got buff. Yeah, he got buff. He, when did he start wearing blue? Go, go watch um, Jack Ryan, Forever Born. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, guys, watch Jack Ryan. It's good. If you want to watch Jim Hopper beat the shit out of people. <laughs> and shoot, shoot guns. <laughs> Wait, have you seen If? No, no, I haven't. I haven't seen If either. It's not good. Yeah, I I think Steph uh, Toon Man for the audience. Um, he he saw it. He said it was fun. He saw it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was him. I talked to him about it with. It might have been. No, it would have had to have been him. There's no one else I I know that would have watched if. Yeah, he probably would. Yeah, I I heard it was okay. Steph kind of looks like that purple guy in If, so I think it was. Steph. What? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna be so pissed off watching this episode. Um, but yeah, so speaking of, of the movie we're supposed to be talking about. Oh yeah, Deadpool 3, yeah, yeah. Hello, and welcome to the middle of this episode. We're recording this a week later. Pat, explain. Uh, so we recorded the whole episode of the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. And, um, despite having very strong opinions before having seen the movie, and then after having seen the movie, um, I forgot to mention the suits completely. <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about the suits. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the we got, we got a new suit for Deadpool in this movie, and uh, and Wolverine, we got to see his comic-accurate yellow suit for the first time on screen. Um, at least the first time we've ever seen him wear it, because there's that joke in the Wolverine that sucks, and I don't like talking about it. Um, I don't know, like, you, you've seen the Wolverine, right, Liv? Yeah, I watched it. Okay, well, there's, there's, a, there's a cut scene from that movie where, I can't remember the character's name, but someone gives Logan a briefcase with the comic suit in it, and he's like, not a fucking chance. Is, is, is it like is it like in DMC where he gets the long hair wig and he takes it out? He's like, not a chance. Yeah, yeah, it's literally exactly that. It's exactly that. Yeah, so this is the first time we see Logan wear the, the comic accurate suit in a movie. I had issues with the suit on like a design level, but not to get like too nerdy. I think the suit looks good. You could talk about the shoulder pads. It's okay. okay I mean, like shoulder, shoulder pads aside. I don't like the shoulder pads. Don't get me wrong. But um, so in, in, in the comics, we, like, you know those like, like, Splits he has like on the side his sides, like on the, on the side of his like waist. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah so, and so so in the comics, those are supposed to be claws. Like they're like claw marks. I guess they just it, it looked stupid, so they changed it. <laughs> but I don't think this direction was necessarily better. It kind of makes the suit look a little over designed. I kind of wish they were just like black claw marks. But aside from that, and like the the shoulder pads. Which I'm sure everybody has heard everyone nerdy talk about, where, like, when he loses the sleeves, he also loses the shoulder pads, and it kind of looks awkward. But other than that, I think the suit looks really good. I actually really like the mask a lot, especially the white eyes. I think this is the first time they've done white eyes in live action that it looked good. It's the first time ever, I think, in a blockbuster movie, aside from Deadpool. But Deadpool's eyes are, are animated, whereas Wolverine's aren't. Spider-Man's eyes are white. No, but, but like... But, like, I, I mean... Like, you know how Batman has, like, his mask, and then everyone saw, like, it wouldn't look good with, like, the white eyes, because they don't animate his, they don't, they don't animate the eyes. I think this is an example of it looking good. Um, I, I do like the white eyes here, and I'd like to see a Batman suit in the future, try it at least. Ba like, Spider-Man's eyes are different, because, like, they're big, and then especially, like, Homecoming, they're, like, they're, they are animated. Like, like, Deadpool's eyes are animated as well, so, like, it, it looks fine. Wolverines aren't, it's just a mask, but I think it looks good, and I'd like to see a Batman take on that in the future. Um, I like the... Deadpool calls them blowjob handles. I like <laughs> the blowjob handles. 
<laughs> they look good. Um, overall, I I think the suit looks good. I like that it's vibrant. Um, I just I could do. I, I wish he kept the shoulder pads when he lost the sleeves, but it's, it's fine. I won't lose sleep over it. Clearly, I forgot to talk about it when we recorded it the first time, <laughs> so I'm not that hurt over it. But just um, if Hugh Jackman ever comes back, which I, I think after this movie's success. Is probably gonna happen, despite me not wanting it. It's probably gonna happen. Um, I hope if he wears this suit again, or a variation of it, I hope he keeps the shoulder pads and loses the sleeves. Kind of like the suit he wears, you know, like at the beginning of the movie when Deadpool's like hopping through the multiverse to find a Logan. There's that Wolverine that fights Hulk. That suit looked perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like like give me that suit, and I'm 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 happy. I'm a happy camper. Yeah, that was a cool suit. Do you have any thoughts on the, the Logan suit before we move on to Deadpool's? Because it is new in this movie. Uh, no, I have I have no connection to Wolverine whatsoever. Well, do you like this suit in the movie? You think it looks good? Uh, look, I'm gonna be honest. I get why they didn't do it before. <laughs> it, I think it looks stupid. That's comic books for you. I think I think I think a bright yellow suit looks stupid. I think the if they wouldn't would want like a darker yellow and like the brown instead of blue, I think it would like the 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 Hulk fight one. I think that one looks good. Yeah, I would have been down for that one. But I do like the suit. Um, Deadpool has a new suit as well. It's it's mostly the same. It's a brighter red. It's a much brighter red, which I like personally. I think it looks good. And I don't know if it's intentional, but like the black bit like around his like, like neck and chest kind of looks like a tie. And I like that. <laughs> Probably not intentional. Like definitely me reading into it a bit too much. Um, but I do like uh, I do like Deadpool suit in this movie. I think it looks good. Yeah, I like Deadpool suit in this movie a lot more than the last one. It's like brighter red. It looks cooler. I think he, he pops more. Yeah, he pops on screen more. The I like his the belt in the, this one. Like the the belt. Like the the. The Deadpool face logo on his belt is bigger. Yeah, and he actually, like, the belt is more visible overall. It's, it's, like, bigger. I'm pretty sure it's just a bigger belt. Yeah, and it doesn't look like a bunch of random plate armor. <laughs> well, we did see that, but... <laughs> That's, um, uh, which Deadpool variant was that? Um, the nice one. Nice the, pool. Yeah, nice pool. Yeah, all the other Deadpools, like, I don't really have a take. They're all fine. The costumes. Like, I, nice pool, I'm pretty sure it looks bad on purpose. I, I, I like to think that that's them mocking the mcu suits to a degree it's very like play it's very over designed it looks bad but i'm i'm willing to bet on purpose yeah it looks like it's made of plastic all the other returning characters have new outfits as well i don't have that strong opinion on most of them except gambits who i think looks very good and it's his first time wearing it obviously we don't have a, a comparison for Gambit. This is its first, and it looks good. And they also confirmed that the, they, they put out a deleted scene. Uh, I don't know how people generally feel about deleted scenes. Obviously, they're removed from the movies for a reason. They did put out the deleted scene of Gambit surviving in the end. So maybe we'll see Gambit again in the future. Who knows? Or, I mean, Channing Tatum's ga uh, Gambit, of course. Um, well, maybe it won't be a <laughs> intentionally bad performance again. I think his suit looks good. This is about suits. The suit looks good. Yeah, I think the suit the suit for Gambit looks really good. I like the trench coat a lot. Yeah, and I think it looks less silly in live action than I thought it was going to. Yeah, I think I think the face thing. It's not a mask. What is it? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 kind of a mask. It like doesn't cover his face. Like was like around his head and his, his yeah, hair is I don't like, know what to call it. That that still looks a little weird. It does. I, I didn't like it when Miles Morales did it in Spider-Man 2 and I don't love the design concept, but it, it is part of Gambit's design, so like, and I think it looks fine for what it is. Yeah. It's just not a design I agree with. Um, I'm looking at the cast. Um, like, there's a, an official photo of all of them together like, and during, before the big fight scene. I think I think Blade and Electro suits are the same, actually. I'm not 100% sure. Blade suit, Blade suit is just like a black, it's just black armor, so it's like... Yeah, and he wears his coat when he's introduced. Yeah, it's but, nothing crazy. An Electro suit, I'm pretty sure, is the same one from her movie. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, that's all the suits, I guess, like, yeah. So, costume design, like, what, do you think this might get nominated for costume design? No. No? No. Superhero movies usually do. They usually do. I can't, you know what, maybe, because I can't think of a, I'm granted, I haven't, like, watched... A lot of movies that have come out this year yet, I've been slacking. So I don't know what's necessarily a contender. So this one might. 
I just like I don't know. I I think they look good, but I wouldn't give it like an Oscar nomination. Yeah, I think I think uh, what's in the what's in in line right now to get nominated for that Dune probably Furiosa maybe. And there, there's like a lot of co- and this one Mike. There's a lot of characters like like there's even like Sabretooth and Juggernaut and there's a lot of characters in this movie that are like barely in the movie, but they do get like pretty good costumes. So m- maybe this will. Yeah, maybe it will. I mean, Suicide Squad did so. True. I mean, that, that one had good. Uh, had good costume design too. This one might. Maybe I'm letting the shoulder pads get to me too much. Yeah, I think it will. Maybe maybe it's just like because it's costumes from other movies, but just a slightly updated. But I don't know. Maybe they'll maybe they'll put some. Is there another superhero movie coming out this year? Uh, no. Marvel really slowed down. Oh, the uh, Craven and Venom and Joker that just came out. Madam Web was this year. Okay, I'll shut up. That's that's a lot of them. <laughs> well, Ma- Madam Web's costumes were garbage. Venom, Venom's not gonna have costumes. Madam Web's co- like her specifically, co- her costume was garbage. Well, I mean that's everything. That's uh, that's we talked about the suits. We did it. We did it. Only like a week late. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, back to your regularly scheduled programming. We yeah, so we talked about one villain, the the TVA guy. His name is Par- Paradox, right? Yeah, I think it's Paradox. Yeah, Mister Paradox. Um, but we have a main antagonist who's not Mister Paradox. Um, it's Cassandra Nova. It's uh, Professor Xavier's twin sister. Who um, I I, I just want to say this now because there isn't a better time. I'm really happy Patrick Stewart didn't come back in this movie. We we got him in Multiverse of Madness. I'm hope I'm happy they they were able to calm themselves and not put him in this one too. Um, yeah, Cassandra Nova is the villain. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of people I talked to in my personal life didn't know Cassandra Nova was like a, a character. Yeah, I didn't know. A lot of people thought she was uh, an OC, which is interesting. Not necessarily a bad thing because she's not like a super like popular character, right? But I think it's cool that Marvel can still do that, <laughs> take like these uncommon names and put them on the big screen and big roles, and it's cool. And I and I hope. Um, this character becomes memorable because she's cool. She was really good in this movie. I actually liked her a lot. Her powers are are really awesome. They don't look too weird. They, you know, like the CGI hand thing. You, you you'd think uh, it would have looked kind of stinky because Marvel CGI, haha. But um, it looked cool. Like I, I actually looked awesome, and I liked her her motivation and her her character in this movie. I think she does a great job. The hand thing is gross. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want it done to me, but like I thought it looked cool. I think that's like the last thing I would want done to me. It looks really gross. I don't want her fingers in my nose and my brain. I don't want to know what it feels like creeping through your your memories. Yeah, and Emma, I think mean, Emma Corrin. I think I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but Emma Corrin plays her, and she does a good job. She's a relatively like unknown English actress. She is in um, the 2024 Nosferatu. If anyone. Is planning to see that. I don't think that's out yet. And so is so is um, another Deadpool actor and um, Bill uh, Skarsgård, isn't it? Is that relevant to this movie? No, because he's in Deadpool two. There you go. <laughs> Deadpool two is good. Go watch that one. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool two is good. Uh, it's 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 better than this one. I mean, nice. I like this movie. This movie's good. The negative points were com- it's it, we both gave it three and a half. There's there's gonna be some negative points. <laughs> It's not like the last episode where the only thing we had to say were good things. <laughs> yeah, we, I, when, I, when I left the theater, I gave it a four. And, um, I, I lowered it to a three and a half now. But like, I, I still think it's a good movie. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I, I think the the one thing a Deadpool movie needs to do well to succeed as a Deadpool movie is be fun. Yeah, it's got to be fun. It's got to be comical. Yeah, I don't, I don't need a, a super serious story. I don't need necessarily a, a grand epic. I, I which this movie does give you, but like I, as long as the movie is fun, it's entertaining. Um, it succeeds as a Deadpool movie, and and this movie does that. But it also like it 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 does tell a personal story, I and mean, it does tell a it do, it does give Wade Wilson meaning as a character. He's not just a fucking jokester. The, the movie is about Wade trying to find meaning in his life, and, and then he finds it, you know, through other people. And and that's that's something a lot of people can relate to. And see, Deadpool's not just jokes, guys. He can be serious. It's just it's so crazy that the first movie, the whole thing was him trying to save Vanessa. Second movie, Vanessa dies at the beginning, and the whole thing he's doing for Vanessa, and then he goes back in time to save Vanessa. And then in this movie, they're broken up, and she's engaged to someone else. 
What the fuck is going on, Wade? Maybe Wade Wilson's a bad significant other. Yeah, no, may maybe he maybe he just Vanessa just wasn't the right girl for him. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of suck that this character only exists as like motivation for Deadpool in his three movies now. But I guess she, like she's not a main character, but it, it's kind of sucks to, that they can't do anything for Wade as a character except use um, Vanessa as motivation. Even like he wants to be a superhero, he wants he wants to matter because if he matters, then he'll be good enough for her. You know, like it's not even like for him. Maybe I I don't know if they'll do a Deadpool four. I don't need one personally. Yeah, I think this movie. I think this movie like closes closes it off pretty well. His arc is he has a good arc. Like now he uh, he appreciates life and the people he 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 he's around. He appreciates them. So I'm I'm okay with this until he shows up in the Avengers movies. So yeah, I'm sure he'll be in like Secret War and stuff. But I I don't need a Deadpool four. But if they ever do a Deadpool 4, I hope Vanessa is not just a MacGuffin. Yeah, I hope I hope it's not like, oh no, Vanessa, I'd like, I don't know, what, what would the plot, what would the, I don't know, someone kidnaps her again. Something else happens and he has to do something else for Vanessa. Then they're gonna break up and then he's gonna, has to prove to her that he's worth it again. And, they, and they're gonna go through the whole shebang again. And then they're gonna get back together. Yeah, how about we, like, if we're going to put Vanessa in these movies, how about we do something interesting with her? Thanks. Give her powers. I don't know. Apparently she has powers in the comic. She does? Apparently. I don't know anything about her character in the comic. There you go. I thought she was an original character, but there, there you go. No, no. I, I, don't, I don't read a lot of Deadpool stuff because uh, I, I don't really like comic Deadpool. Apparently she's an existing character and apparently she has powers. Well, there you go. That's, that's how you make her more interesting. Or just have her be, like, a functioning member of the story. Instead of just being a MacGuffin. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Hugh Jackman. Till you're 90. Is that implying that he's gonna be Wolverine forever now? He's, well, Hugh Jackman's coming back for Avengers? It's clearly a joke, but I would not be surprised if he's in Avengers. Like, the Suko War, specifically. I really don't want him to be. Like, please, God, control your boner, Kevin. Look, I I know this this Hugh Jackman is a, it's a different Hugh Jackman than the one from Logan. The Hugh Jackman from Logan is dead. That's a point a plot point in this movie that the whole reason the Fox universe is going to be destroyed is because Hugh Jackman is dead or Wolverine is dead. So they get they get the, this Wolverine just to bring him in to like the, bring him into this universe. Now there's another Hugh Jackman in this universe which I don't think should work. Like the rules that they put out about the whole anchor being thing I don't think that's how it should work. It, that, 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 that's not how it works. I, I don't I don't think I, I I remember at the end of the movie they like talk to like the TVA lady from Loki. I don't I don't remember her name. But the one that's like actually in Loki at the end of the movie. And and Wade is I I'm probably wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I vaguely remember Logan uh, Wade being like, Hey, um my universe is dying, can it like not die, please? I just saved everybody. And she's like, Okay. We'll, we'll keep it from dying, I guess. And then they were like, okay, like, I, can Logan come over and, and, and I'll buy snacks? And she's like, okay, he could come over. And, and then Daphne Keen is back too. I don't think the movie explains it much beyond that. It, it's definitely not Logan replaced Logan because earlier in the movie, they say that you can't do that. I vaguely remember a conversation with the lady from the TV and I just, I don't remember what was said. Yeah, unfortunately the movies is still in theaters, so we can't go check, so. <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> and, um. Legally. Yeah, I think, I think the universe is still either, it's either going to die anyway, but like in, in thousands of years, so it doesn't matter for the characters present anyway. Which is what the movie presents to begin with, like, I'm, I don't know why Wade was making, I mean, I get it, I guess he's a hero, he doesn't want his universe to die, but like. It it the, the whole anchor being thing is stupid. It's just a stupid plot point. It's a it's really dumb. Like they they just made it up for this movie so that they they can have some kind of motivation for Wade. Like just it's like well, the whole reason he does what he does in this movie is because he doesn't want his friends to die. What's even stupider is the the whole thing about the anchor being and like the whole thing that uh, that Mister Paradox just wanted to destroy that universe just to get it over and done with quickly and not have to wait a thousand years. That's fine, but why would they want to put him into the sacred timeline in the first place? I mean, if, if Mr. Paradox just didn't care and just wanted to destroy the universe right away, he would have done it. There'd be no movie. I, I, I think uh, 
because like his his job was to sit and watch the universe die, right? I think his bosses told them told him to get way to bring him into the sacred timeline. Because like we we the whole chilling the universe early thing was independent of what his orders were. Yeah, just he wanted to do so, that. Like his his orders were to bring Wade to the sacred timeline and then watch the Fox universe die because Wade was special. But then he decided I'm gonna kill it early, but like. They didn't know that, right? So like that—that's why Wade is was offered the the actual explanation is because he needs to be in Avengers movies. Yeah, that's but, why. But in in the movie, it's his uh, the paradox's orders were to offer the chance to Wade, and then watch the universe die. If Paradox was smart, he wouldn't have told Wade anything about all that universe dying shit. But then we wouldn't have a movie. No, because I think I think Wade would have still been like, "What about Peter?" You know. <laughs> What about Peter? And then Paradox is like, Peter Parker, right? Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man reference. I know the, the, the whole the whole TVA um, anchor being thing is really dumb. And I feel like if it was going to be brought up anywhere, this is a weird movie to bring it up in for the first time. The, the anchor being thing is stupid. Like, uh, I think there was a way to make this movie work without having to introduce a whole new concept. I like the TVA itself. It's introduced in Loki, and I think introducing the TVA was a really good way to explain how multiverses work, and I, I like the TVA. It's a good concept. So far, everything about the TVA, I've been a big fan of, it, except for the anchor being thing. It's just stupid. Well, it just creates a bunch of questions, like... Like, who who's the anchor being in the sacred timeline? Does the sacred timeline not have one because it's the sacred timeline? Is it Loki, technically? Because he's, like, the god of stories now? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I hear some people say that uh, Robert Downey Jr. was the anchor being, but, like, no, because he's dead and the universe still exists. <laughs> well, like, when, when the anchor beings die, the universe only dies, like, thousands of years later. So if, like, Tony could still be the anchor being. I don't think the sacred timeline has one because it's the sacred timeline. I, I, I don't know. I just hope it's not Spider-Man. I just, I hope the anchor beings just don't come up again. Because I, I don't like that concept. It's it's as bad, it's as stupid as Metachlorians. It's as stupid as Metachlorians. Because it, it puts like, the, it, it does the same thing that Metachlorians did. It's, it's like, oh, it's not that anybody has the potential to be special. You're special. And you're the only one that can be special. That's what Metachlorians did. And that's what, anchor, that's what the anchor being thing is doing. So no, I don't like anchor beings. I don't just fuck. Get yeah, no, I don't. Shit. I don't like it either. I don't like like how does it work like before the anchor being is born, right? Like the movie doesn't touch on that. Either. Yeah, like and who decides who the anchor being is? Does Loki decide now? Because he's the god of stories. Does he decide? Stanley decides. Like who knows? <laughs> and like like L Logan is kind of like a good candidate because he's t hypothetically immortal, right? But like, what if, what if like the anchor being of like our like our universe like real life is like john down the street like what happens when he dies and what 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 happened to the universe before john was born like the movie doesn't explain it and nothing is going to explain it unless this is be this becomes a big deal i just hope it doesn't i hope it's never mentioned yeah and another thing that this movie doesn't explain is in in the void whenever a universe gets purged or whenever a, a person gets uh, gets purged they get thrown into this void what i want to know is uh how the fuck did x23 get into the void they never explain it so somebody purged her and they never explain why we we know that the tva and the movie says it too the tva like sends problems to the to the, the void it doesn't necessarily need to be like a world ending threat they just send people that like cause problems so like maybe they just sent her there because she was being a shit disturber <laughs> yeah, I, that that's the best explanation i could but come the up movie with. doesn't explain that she's just there yeah it, she's just there and it is the same x23 from logan it's the one from the fox universe she's the only person from the fox universe that's in the void right now besides deadpool so like what the fuck is she doing there <laughs> well yeah because we don't yeah, I guess, like, Daredevil and, and, and Blade would be different universes. Yeah, Blade's in a different universe. Uh, Gambit's in his own thing. Elektra was in... The, it would be in the same universe as Daredevil. So, they're all from different universes, right? And and so th and that means we also know that those universes have been purged. So, those universes don't exist anymore. So, maybe there won't be a Gambit movie. <laughs> Unless there's a Gambit in the Sacred Timeline. But did, did they... 
Yeah, I guess it is established that their universes are gone and weren't just pruned. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know. Pruned. It's weird. It's weird. And, that, and like, maybe like in Secret War, everybody's going to end up in the void instead of Battle World. If you read comic books, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think it's going to be in the void. We'll have to see. Now that Cassandra Nova is dealt with, the void needs a new leader. And I guess that's easier to explain than Doctor Doom just being the leader of this country that just exists now. It's never been mentioned before because Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. is fucking the main MCU Doctor Doom for some reason. Makes no sense. Uh, I hate that casting so much. But that, that, that's something we talked about last time. So. I'm sure we'll talk about it when that movie comes out. <laughs> yeah, or, or if like when Fantastic Four comes out and stuff. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He's not going to be in Fantastic Four. Oh, I don't know, man. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe he won't be. Well, we know we we know Galactus is the villain for Fantastic Four. Yeah, but he could be in it just like at, like in the movie, but not as the main villain. Like Silver Surfer is in the movie too. Well, how how old is Doctor Doom? Would he be alive in the sixties? At least Reed's age. He'd be Reed's age. Okay. So. Yeah. The casting is so like oh my god! I could I could talk about this fucking casting forever. It's it's, it's so dumb. Like, we could we could talk about stupid shit that Marvel has done for an entire episode. That should be a whole episode. Stupid shit Marvel yeah, has if done. We ever, <laughs> yeah, we need a filler episode. We have that in the back burner, I guess. Yeah, that that you know what uh, we're we're making that public. If we ever have no absolutely no idea what to do for an episode, you guys will get a stupid shit that Marvel has done episode. <laughs> well, I know a fun Doctor Doom fact, like not related to anything. Yeah, go ahead, boy. But but Doom, Doom hates Reed so much that when when Sue was giving birth to their their child, she was like having complications and dying while in, in labor. The Fantastic Four, except Reed, called Doctor Doom for help because they knew that Reed, like like Doom, would save this child just to spite Reed, and then he did it. He see he saved the daughter and his wife. And then made a like the the um, the agreement was I'll save this baby, but you need to like I get to pick the name of the baby, and I have to be the baby's godparent. And he did all that just so Reed. Every time Reed looks at his daughter, he has to think about Doctor Doom. He did it out of fucking spite. It's amazing. What did, what did he name the kid? I can't remember. Let me, let me look up. Hold on. I can't remember did, the name. Did he name it Victor? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it, it's like a like a a thought of name. Hold on, I'm looking it up. It's a Valeria. It's like a Romanian name. Uh, at least it's not a Victor. <laughs> and like Re Reed and uh, uh, Valeria and Doom are like really close. Okay, yeah. Like like Doom like telepathically talks to her sometimes to check up. <laughs> like how's how's my godchild doing? Is your dad is your dad dead yet? Damn it! <laughs> Let me know when he dies. <laughs> I love that Doctor Doom has every every way, any way he wants. He could just kill. He could just kill Reed whenever he wants, but he just decides not to. It's like when the like the Joker won't kill Batman because then crime has no punchline. <laughs> I love uh, Doctor Doom. He's such a great character, and he's playing by he's being played by Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, you, you think uh, I saw this? I saw this picture on Instagram. It made me laugh so hard. Uh, you know how everybody wanted Cillian Murphy to be uh, Doctor Doom? Oh, it's like. As the meme is like, oh yeah, get the guy from Oppenheimer, and he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, they get the wrong guy. <laughs> Kevin Feige was like, get me the guy from Oppenheimer. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the guy from Oppenheimer. All right. I, mean, I don't have, I don't have that much else to say about this. I think the movie's good. It's fun. I think if you haven't seen it and you generally like Marvel stuff, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it is worth. Like, obviously, you should watch the first two Deadpool movies first. This is a third movie in a trilogy. But I think it's also worth watching Logan before watching this movie to get the full picture. I'm not huge on uh, Hugh Jackman coming back, right? I, I, Logan was a good send off, but it is a different it is a different Logan. So I'm okay with it. I'm it's it's okay. I think like barring Guardians three because that movie was good, but it's like the best thing the MCU has put out in a long time. Yeah, I would say so too. Yeah. I think Guardians Three is a better movie, but like, I'm, like, with that as the exception, I think this, this and Guardians Three are some of the better MCU movies, at least in in recent times. It's definitely the best thing to come out since like No Way Home, I'd say. Yeah, I think so far. I think, like, if we're talking movies, then yeah, I think Guardians Three is the best movie that's come out. Yeah, uh, I agree. From from the, but if we're talking MCU in general, I think honestly, Loki season two was so good. 
So I think I think Loki season two might be uh, my favorite MCU thing that's that's been released recently. But yeah, so far, just I mean, I don't want to get into a big tangent just to make this quick. The MCU, it's dead already. It's over. We're done, guys. We lost. Good movies are dead. <laughs> movies are over. We'll never get a good movie ever again. Scorsese was right. He was right. We we didn't listen to him. And uh fuck he was right. Did you did you see that quote from Quentin Tarantino yesterday? No, what is he's like I'll never I'll never watch Toy Story 4 because Toy Story 3 was perfect. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, that trilogy is perfect and I'll never even if four is good, I'm not watching it. <laughs> I love that. He's he's so right. He's so right. He is, he's right. He's actually right. I think more people need to apply that logic. <laughs> yeah, so don't watch Toy Story 5, guys. Yeah, if, if you if you see a good trilogy, don't watch the fourth one. Just make them, but with your wallets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. It was pretty good. Somehow, it is somehow Sean Levy's best movie. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, three and a half out of five. It's, it's pretty good. I recommend it. And watch it in theaters. It's good. Yeah. And uh, with that, we're going to move on to uh, our little TV show segment. Is there any TV shows you saw recently, Pat? I watched Chicago Fire and Chicago PD. All right, same as last week. <laughs> uh, for me, um, yeah, not much really. But I have been, I have been thinking of uh, of rewatching Parks and Recreation. You might hear me talk about Parks and Recreation later. Good show. It is a really good show. Yeah, and um, speaking of good things. We have another movie to talk about. Time for Backlogged. This is the segment where we recommend each other movies to talk about in the next episode. Last time, Pat recommended me the Alfred Hitchcock classic, Psycho, a movie that I had somehow never seen. We watched that movie together um, last week, right? Two weeks ago? Last week? Uh... Recently. Recently. Uh, I had previously seen this movie. I love this movie, like most people do, I think. I think this is a really good movie. It has definitely shown its age. <laughs> this movie released in 1960, after all. But I think it also shows its age in a good way, where like, they, they were able to do things with such limited... Um, I'm going to say hardware, but it's not exactly the right word. Limited resources. Res resources. Um, this movie is famous for one very specific scene, the, the shower scene. Oh, you had never seen it before, right? No, this is the first time I watched Psycho. I've seen the shower scene millions of times. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like the shower scene specifically. Okay. Oh, the shower scene. I've seen it a thousand times. Yeah. Yeah, it's been referenced in media forever. It's it's famous for a reason. Not aged the best. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, um... like when you you think of the shower scenes, like such a famous scene, but then watching it in the movie, first of all, it's a lot earlier in the movie than I thought it was gonna be. The shower scene is really good up until when we cut to Marion and she's like, we're like, oh god, oh, I'm being stabbed, oh god, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's her exact quote. <laughs> I don't know, but I think the, the scene, I'm sure the scene was really chilling back in the day, but now it's just like, it, it looks fake. It, 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 is, it has aged, it has aged. It has aged, but you know, I got, I have to give it credit because 1960 alfred hitchcock master of his craft really this movie is amazing it's got really good writing uh, the dialogue's really tight i really like norman bates's character yeah he's really good he's good at convincing convincing you which you know he's playing a psychopath this movie reminded me a lot of no country for old men actually yeah it's like the, the a psychopath you know, and, and No Country for Old Man, you know he's a psychopath right away. I mean, the first scene in that movie is him killing a police officer. But in, in Psycho, uh, you're not too sure at first. Like, like you, you think as when, when Marion gets to the motel, you just think that it's just a random motel. But no, that's where like 70% of the movie takes place. It's it's a good it's a it's a good uh, subverting your expectation because you just think it's a random uh, motel guy. But no, he's a psychopath killer. And and this movie does something interesting that horror movies like just didn't do at the time. And movies in general don't really do in, like at all. Is they they kill their protagonist? Yeah, yeah. It's you true. know they 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 kill their protagonist, and then you they there's this like it's like an eight minute scene of Norman like cleaning up the the murder, and like you this is like easily like you're trying to ease you into like the shift where he becomes the main character, right? For like the rest of the movie. But it's super unsettling because you're watching him like 
do this clearly psychotic behavior, but then you're also kind of sitting down in the chair, like realizing, oh, like now we're following him. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's creepy. It's creepy and it's unsettling. Yeah, and then and then uh, it goes from being a uh, slasher escape movie to a heist movie, and uh, or I should say crime, a crime movie. And I love crime flicks. I really like uh, what's his name, Sam, Marion's sister. I love her character. Everybody is great in this movie. Like the casting is amazing. I don't know how I had never seen it until now. <laughs> I should watch more Hitchcock movies. Yeah, and I, I mean, I recommended it to you because I, I knew you'd like it. And it's also a classic. Hitchcock movies. We should watch more of those. And down. Because I want to watch Rear Window because I hear it's really, really good. Yeah, we could, we could do like a movie night. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, because the, the, the good thing about Hitchcock movies, well, for most of them, they're a little shorter than, you know, movies these days. They're usually under two hours. So we can do like two or three Hitchcock movies in a night. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm definitely down. I and mean, we could talk about them here, like just off the cuff, you know. Yeah, we could do like a like a Hitchcock movie night, and we make that into an episode. We could even like fill in the the TV show segment if we haven't watched the TV show to talk about. Oh, we watched this Hitchcock movie because we talked about that last time. You never know. Yeah, we can do that. We're, we're always th th coming up with uh, new ideas for this podcast. If you have an idea that might work well with this podcast, let us know because we we. We want to change things up. It's it's always good to have some extra things to talk about because we love talking about things. <laughs> that we do. Video game podcast spinoff. Fresh off the Rolling Rocker. That's what it was, right? Yeah, fresh off the Rolling Rocker. How about we call it Nostalgia Critic? I don't like that name. <laughs> Never say that to me again. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. I gave I gave Psycho four and a half out of five. I thought it was fantastic. I already had it at a 5 out of 5, and it, it's staying as a 5 out of 5. It's a great movie. You know, Pat, I recommended you a great movie. I recommended you Apocalypse Now and RR two fantastic movies. And then you recommended me another fantastic movie. I think we had it too good for too long. Yeah, we're gonna... I'm getting, I'm getting a shitter, aren't I? Uh, you're getting a... It's not terrible. The movie's not terrible. But the movie I'm going to recommend you today is actually a movie from my childhood. Okay. Picture this, okay? That could be really good or really bad, because uh, childhood movies are interesting. Picture this. It's a beautiful evening. Like, let's say the year is 2008. Okay. You go to the video store, and you go, and you're, like, you're there with your, your parents, and you want to rent a movie to watch as a family tonight. You know, right after supper, we go, we go in the living room and enjoy a, a nice movie. What's the movie you would choose? Silence of the Lambs. That's a great pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was going for. What movie were you going for? <laughs> the scenario I just played out for you is something that's actually happened to me. And the movie we picked, and we would pick this movie constantly, and we, we watched this movie like a million times. Rat Race. We would walk in to the, to the, the video store, rent Rat Race, and watch it at home. And I... I'm telling you, that video store stayed open because of how many times we rented Rat Race. I didn't know this was in my watch list. I didn't know this was a movie. Yeah, this is a movie. Rat Race. It's actually, um, it's not a remake, but it's like a kind of, uh, like a spiritual successor to It's a Mad 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 World. It's not as good as It's a Mad 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 World, but... It's still pretty funny. I like it. It's a childhood movie of mine. I would like to watch it together. Yeah, sure. We'll watch it together. I I, I don't know when I added this to my watches. I did not know this was a real movie. This is a real movie, dude. Dude, look, look at this cast. Uh, Rowan Atkinson, uh, John Cleese, Whoopi Goldberg, Seth Green. That's a good cast. Wayne Knight's in it. I like Wayne Knight. He's in Jurassic Park. Yeah. So uh, we're going to enjoy a bit of Rat Race. It's a funny movie. I, I think it's really funny, but uh, it is a movie from my childhood and I haven't seen it in like, I want to say 12 years, like maximum 12 years. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to rewatch it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that soon. And with that, that'll close off today's episode of Fresh Off The Real. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. Tune in next episode where we go are going to be talking about a goofy movie. And an extremely goofy movie. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why 
Uh, because, well, actually, uh, this is actually a happy coincidence. I did not realize this until this moment exactly. Today, right now, at the time of recording, the day we are recording this, is our three-year anniversary. Oh, wait, really? Sorry. Yeah, it's today. <laughs> happy anniversary! <laughs> happy anniversary, everybody! Thank you guys so much for three years of Fresh Off The Real. That's insane. I, how the fuck? It's already been three. It feels like we started this podcast, like, a couple months ago. Yeah, but uh, three years running and plenty more to come. So just to celebrate the occasion, just to do a little special episode for you guys, two of our guilty pleasure movies, <laughs> a goofy movie and an extremely goofy movie. I love these movies. Both these movies are like both huge parts of both of our childhoods. It's just, they're just great movies. And if you haven't seen them, uh, watch them right now so that you know what we're talking about next episode. <laughs> but again, thank you guys for three years of Fresh Off The Reel. Here's to three more. Let's go. Let's go, baby. With that being said, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you like this episode and you want to hear more, then make sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any updates. You could find us on our link tree, linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel, no spaces and no caps. There you could also find a place where you can recommend us a movie or a TV show and we'll take your recommendation and make it into an episode. And also on that link tree, you can find all of the places where you can listen to our lovely voices. They shut down Google Podcasts. Did you know this, Pat? You know they closed yeah, Google I, Podcasts? Uh, I did not. Yeah. Fuck you, Google. We had people using it. But we're also, well, we, we're actually, uh, we're now on Audible. So uh, if you're listening on Audible, welcome. But thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see all of you in Ethereum near you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.